Hello everybody, this is the Bulldozer and thank you for giving me your time and thank you for watching another one of my videos. I'm putting this video on uh, my gaming YouTube channel and I'm also going to tag Fortnite in it because of a reason. Not only kids play Fortnite, okay? And if you have a CVT transmission, you need to be made aware of this. First off, most places will not work on a CVD tra CVT transmission. The only place we could find to work on ours is the dealership called nine different places. And as soon as I uttered the letters CVT, they would not touch it. Now you might want to know what is special about this video and I'll get to that in just a second. But me and my wife probably came closer than we ever have from a trip to the hospital. We are on interstate and we are doing 60 mile an hour and you cannot even tell we are doing 60 mile an hour and I say we're doing 60 mile an hour because that's what the gauge said okay the RPM gauge I don't know the exact abbreviation for it but I'll call it the RPM gauge that went up to 4 and would not move now folks we're doing 60 mile an hour and you can see these cars are just blowing by us so I have kind of have a feeling that maybe we really wasn't doing 60 mile an hour I can see a couple cars going past us, especially in the left-hand lane, which is the high-speed lane, but not on the right-hand lane. And then all of a sudden, my wife yells because the person behind us almost slammed into the back of our vehicle. My wife couldn't do anything because, as you can see, there's cars coming. There's construction on the right-hand side, so there's no shoulder to pull into, but she can't even get over to even be on in that outside lane because of all the traffic in a second this wall is going to go down and you'll see the cones come up but you can see now she's she's able to start getting over and here comes the cones so I have her pull inside the cones just past this exit right here because uh, we've had a couple issues in the past and you know it's um, I forget what it, was, what it was called, but if you turn the Jeep off, you let it set for a few minutes, and you turn it back on, it's like it resets itself. And so I had her turn the Jeep off. We waited. I checked the oil. had her start the Jeep, check the oil. just wanted to make sure, you know, everything was legit. You can't check the transmission fluid in these in the CVT transmission because it is a sealed transmission. That's the reason why most people will not work on this transmission, folks. So be warned, if you have a vehicle that has a CVT transmission, make sure you know where you're going to take it before you need to have it repaired on. Now here is our back camera. And here we are coming onto the interstate. And you see, you know, this is the on-ramp, but she is maintaining a good speed here. I really didn't notice her going slow or anything, because when I looked over, her gauge said 60 miles an hour. And the speed limit had just gotten down from either, either 65 to 55 or 60 to 55. So here we are. We are in what I call the number two lane. And number one lane would be the high speed lane, which is going to be on your left right now. And of course, the two lanes on your right, um, the one you can see the construction wall. You got this car right here. They're going to signal and get over. And watch this car here, folks. This car changed lanes. Then watch how the whole front of this car dips down. Folks, this is at 60 miles an hour. Then look how they get closer. They slow down, but they got closer on our rear end. So. Again, make sure if you have, and I've heard people uh, having issues with a 30,000 mile CVT transmission. The stuff I've seen on YouTube and the stories I read in forums. This Jeep has got 111,000 miles on it. My wife doesn't even put 700 miles a month on this Jeep. Does very little driving. So it doesn't have to have the transmission flushed until um, 120,000 miles, which is a $450 job 
to have the transmission fluid taken out, a, a transmission filter put in, $450 by a Jeep dealership. So again, I'm going to play this video back for you real quick, just so you can see what I'm talking about. But this was just absolutely insane. Then I'm going to show you us getting back on the interstate. Okay, here comes the first car behind us. And I want you to see how when this car changes lanes, the car that is behind them just changed lanes. So by the way they was driving, I really believe they was cutting in and out of traffic. Because there's no way, no way at all, even if they didn't see us to the last second, her gauge said 60 mile an hour. So, if that gauge is not broken and we're doing 60 miles an hour, they had to be at least doing 70, 80 miles an hour, if not more. Now, here you go. This car is changing lanes. Now, look. You can see back there. Look at the tires on the left-hand side of that vehicle. They are in the other lane. So, apparently, they just changed lanes. And they saw us, and they kept coming up on us. And, and there's nobody next to us. The car that just changed lanes went past us. So why they just didn't get over, I don't know. Either that or they wasn't paying attention. I mean, look how close they are. And here in a second, you're not going to see any other headlights. See, they start to get over, then they come back. Look, all their headlights are gone now. The camera is faced out the back window of our Jeep. Okay? So that gives you an idea on how close they are on our bumper. They had to come within inches of hitting us. Had to. And instead of them backing off, they remain on our tail end. Look, there was nobody behind them. They could have backed off. They could have slowed down. Because apparently... They wasn't driving through us. They could have slowed down and they chose not to. It could have been somebody without a license too. Who knows? There's so many scenarios that you could you could say. But the fact is, the gauge said we was doing 60 mile an hour. And all of a sudden, this person comes up on my wife, freaks my wife out. Because all she sees is these headlights getting closer and closer. So I hit the button on the dash cam. We have a mirror dash cam. And folks, you need to go and buy you a mirror dash cam. You get them from $35 to $50 on Amazon. Or you can get them from eBay. If you get them from eBay, make sure it's somebody that's got a very, very good track record. And it's a mirror that goes over your mirror. You have a camera that shoots out the front of your windshield. Nobody can tell it's there because it looks like a mirror. Because it is a mirror. It's a mirror with an LCD screen. And I'll show you some pictures of it here at the end of the video. It's a mirror with an LCD screen. Then you have another camera that goes in the back that shoots out your back window. It's a weatherproof camera, so you can actually put it outside if you want. I just haven't done that yet. Eventually, I'm going to. That's if we keep this vehicle. But... And, and the other good thing is that it's got a wire that you can have. Either you can do it or you can have a mechanic do it. They can connect this wire to your brake lights. So when you put your car in reverse, that LCD screen that is on that mirror, it's got lines that, sh that helps you when you back up, that, that engage as soon as you put the car in reverse. But again, just look at all these cars, how they are passing us up. And it takes takes a while to get over. And it was just absolutely crazy, folks. Absolutely crazy. And I got another video that I'll put in the description of this video. And I uploaded. It happened just minutes later. It happened minutes later. A person coming off the highway took and changed lanes. They used their turn signal, but they changed lanes and forced my wife into the other lane. They didn't even use their mirror to see if anybody was next to them. Now, we get complaints all the time 
We get people flashing their lights at us thinking we got our high beams on. If you see a Jeep with a, um, a bright light and it's not an LED, that's how that light is made. Now, if my wife puts her high beams on, you're going to know she has her high beams on. Because this is a circular housing, and the way they have, have it made, the light is really bright. You really don't have a need for an LED bulb. You really don't. Besides blinding other drivers. But you can see here we're pulling off the side of the highway. Now I'm going to show you when we get back on the highway here. Right here's where we get back on the highway. You can see the Jeep is running fine. And the other thing was too, I forgot to mention, there was a smell. So that was one of the reasons why I checked the oil when, it, when the Jeep was running and why it wasn't running. To see if I can get that smell. And it wasn't. Apparently there was a gear, there was a gear stuck and it wouldn't go into the high gear. And that's what the deal was. But again, we turned everything off. We got we got a check engine light, but that is for a tire sensor. But I'm going to have that checked out before I take it to the dealer. Um, so I know, you know what's going on. Because the warranty that we have with the vehicle, we're supposed to take it one place. And they don't work on transmissions. So they're allowing us to go out of network any place we want. And after all the calls I made today... The dealership was the only one that would touch a CVT transmission. So it's part of the reason why I'm putting this video out there. You can see we're kind of maintaining the traffic and everything with these other cars. They're not flying past us like they was earlier. You see it's just a steady flow of cars. Earlier, if you remember in the beginning of this video, you can go back and look. It's the first clip. The cars was just zooming past us. So, again... If you have an issue with your transmission, get off, get off to the side of the road as quick as possible, as safely as possible, and turn your car off. Don't turn it off. Turn it right back on. Turn your car off. Give it a few moments. Because probably if you're in a situation like this, you're probably going to be a little shooken up because you was almost in an accident. So you, pr you should probably should calm down and gather your thoughts before you get back on the road after dealing with a situation like this and take and go a little more distance now the good thing was we knew where we was so if we had any issues we could have got off of the highway and actually we have family very close by but it's insane folks it is absolutely insane why all these places will not work on a train and, and here's the other thing that really gets me you cannot check the transmission fluid of a CVT transmission. It has a cap on it. Hold on, let me see if I can find a picture on Google. Okay, here is the cap that is on the dipstick shaft. And it says other fluids will other fluids will damage the CVT transmission. Use only Chrysler CVT fluid CVT F plus four. Then you really can't tell it but in the center of that, ours, it's actually printed with white letters. It's not blacked out like that. It says, for dealer use only. If you see that, folks, really, really consider getting a different vehicle. Because you're talking a lot of money. Like I said, when I called to ask how much a transmission flush would be, 450 dollars this has a special transmission fluid in it that's at uh, cvt um f plus four depending on where you can get it it can be as much as twenty dollars a quart and i've seen some of my posts where they paid thirty dollars a quart for it and i will update this video so make sure you um subscribe to the channel because I don't know if I'm going to update it with a new video or if I'll add comments down below here we'll have to wait and see what type of information I get because we're going to have it looked at um, it's under warranty but we got to pay a hundred and forty dollar diagnostics check um, but 
if it is proven to be the transmission, which we know it is, if it's proven to be the transmission, we only have to pay the $100 deductible. And we won't have to pay the diagnostics check. But there you go, folks. Again, remember, it's people like this driver right here. And I don't, I don't really care if, you know, we're having issues. They had more than enough time to change lanes once they got behind us. And they stayed right on top of us. Like we was just going to vanish or something. It's reason. It's people like this is the reason why you need to have a dash cam in your vehicle. When it comes to audio, you can record audio in some states. You got to look and see what your local laws are, depending on which state you're in. It's called a wiretapping law. In Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana, it is a one-party consent which I use it all the time. If I deal with business over the phone, I record my phone conversation. Dealing with the bank, dealing with the insurance, just dealing with anybody. For one, I can go back and listen to the phone call in case I forgot to jot something down or something. The other thing is, if they say something while they have you on the phone, then when it comes time to process paperwork, and they say we never said that, well, then you've got the evidence that they said it on the phone. And a one-party consent means only one party of the conversation needs to be made aware of that um, call that's being recorded. But you can't record nobody else's. If you're not part of that conversation, you cannot record it. Like if you're in a park or on a street or something, you can't use a special device and record somebody's conversation. But if you're talking to somebody on the phone, it doesn't make a difference where they're at. It's where you're at because you're doing the recording. They don't have to know. And who made that really big was the gentleman from AOL years ago that um, kept this guy on the phone for like two hours because he was trying to cancel his AOL membership. I don't know if uh, people remember that or not. It was absolutely insane. It was on all the news stations and, and everything. And they had no clue he was recording them because he was in a one-party consent state. Now I'll show you the pictures of the dash cam we have installed. I know this is going to be a long video, but... Again, I'm trying to give you some information because if you're watching this video, apparently you've got the problem with your transmission and you're trying to get as much information as possible. Again, quick highlights. We was doing 60 mile an hour on the interstate. The um, RPM gauge went to 4. It was dead bone center on 4. Would not move off of 4 like it was glued there. And... It would not uh, change gears. One thing I forgot to mention. Very important part. This transmission has an overdrive on it. We was able to use the overdrive and get it to change gears. That's how my wife was able to get over. But automatically, the transmission would not change gears. We had to do it ourselves. So I'm going to need to add a, um, a highlight make sure they... Make sure that people watch this whole video because there's some information here at the end. I'm not going to go, go back and record the whole thing. Now take a look at my dash cam that I have. Here is the main picture of it. You can see who I got this from on eBay. It is a 1080p full HD dash cam. Now the, the one issue I have with this dash cam, which I'm not really too concerned about, is the audio recording. The audio recording is absolutely horrible. But... I don't have this for audio recording. I have this to record what goes on in the front of my vehicle and the back of my vehicle. There where it says it has the rear view camera plus, there's two different kinds and they're showing you both of them right there. The one on the right hand side is a round circular um, shaped camera or you have the, the square one right here. Okay. Um, at least I think they might be showing you. And even if they're not, even if it's the same camera, there's two different cameras you might get. You might get this square one like we got, or there's a round dome one that looks just like this here that you might get. Both of them are able to be mounted outside. What the purpose of these yellow things are, I don't really know. If you know, leave me a comment down below. Um, I really don't know. Um, but again, um, you have a long wire that runs from the front of your vehicle to the back of your vehicle. It runs off of your cigarette lighter. Now, I got a different wire because the way I have, have the plug ran up to our mirror, um, I didn't use the cigarette lighter. I, I'm actually using a 
USB adapter. Um, I think it, just the quality of the wire that I'm using is better than the power cord that they sent me. I just wasn't really happy with it. But again, that to me, that's all minor things. You got the LC, LCD screen there on the right hand side. It's exactly how mine is. You have all these buttons. You can have both cameras playing. You can have the main front camera. Then the upper right hand corner, it'll have the back camera. Uh, let's see, let me show you some pictures here. Okay, here's a picture of what I was talking about earlier. See how if you connect it to your um, your backup lights, not your brake lights. I think I said brake lights earlier. It's your it's your um, reverse lights. You connect it to your reverse lights. This here is going to kick in on your mirror. These green lines and stuff right here. So that way you you can tell if somebody's behind you, and it will beep at you if there was somebody behind you. Just like if you had one installed in the vehicle. This is what you get in the box. This at the bottom here, you can see that's the power cable. Up top here, you see the the inside camera. There's a, there's a little plug. With this spool of wire is on the lower left hand side. There's a little plug right there that separates that wire from this camera right here. But you see those red wires right there. Those red wires are what gets connected to your reverse lights. So again, when you put the car in reverse, this will um, kick in automatically change. You get two uh, rubber straps. You simply place the camera in front of your mirror. There is Velcro or something behind it so you can't scratch your mirror. And you simply connect the straps on the bottom, one on each side. And it wraps around the current mirror you have and, and um, snaps in up top. And if you're looking at the buttons here on the bottom of the camera, you take the two buttons here in the center and you go straight up. That is where the power goes in. There's an SD card up there. We have a 36 or I think it's a 36 gigabyte SD card um, that gives us three and a half hours of recording time. This will record over itself. It's got numerous sensors. If somebody beep or beeps your car, if somebody bumps into your car, it'll record it. Uh, again, just a number of different features. And here is what I was talking about earlier. It shows you the three windows that you have the choice from. You can they're starting off the top left. It says front view of a front lens. That's the camera that's connected to the housing that's strapped to your mirror. Full view of the rear lens. That is the camera that has the wires that connects to your tail lights if you decide to hook them up. And then you have the option front and rear view that I was talking about, which I think this is the default setting. If not, that's it's our default setting. That's what we have. Um, if we get somebody behind us, then we will simply switch it over and take in, um, have the full view camera. It always comes in handy too at nighttime because even though you have that mirror, it's always nice to have that camera shooting out the back of your vehicle or, you know, from the back of your vehicle, depending on where you got it. And it really helps out the driver. Yes, it's a small window, but it's a, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you know, it magnifies the effect, so you, you get a little more closer view than you would as opposed to looking through your rearview mirror, or mirror, excuse me, through your car, out the window. You know, this can give you a better idea on exactly how far back people are and everything. All right, folks, I've spoken enough. Jimmy at Christmas. It is past, what, 23 minutes, almost 24 minutes. I've given you enough information in this video. If you got any questions, post them down below. You can check my gaming videos out. I'm a Fortnite player, um, Call of Duty player. We got we got we got I do a bunch of different video games. But again, I wanted to share this video on this channel because this channel is focused on not just you know um, the children that play the game. It's anybody that plays the game, which means people that drive. And if you're a driver. You need to know this information. And if nothing else, if you take nothing away from this video, take this away. If you have a CVT transmission, make sure you know where you can take it to have it serviced if it needs to be serviced. Don't wait until the last minute. You go through your manual, look at your manual. If you, if you happen to have a Jeep, if you go to jeep.com at the bottom of the page, um, there's a location where you can pull up an owner's manual for your Jeep. Just follow the instructions. 
you can download a PDF file and it, it's that simple follow the maintenance that's on the vehicle especially when it comes to the transmission because you know when it comes time to do a flush and ours they're caught they're charging four hundred fifty dollars I can only imagine what a newer transmission cost because I've heard that a lot of the Chrysler vehicles have CVT transmissions in them.